Uh, so with that said, uh, let's get to our keys to the game. High level, what does each team need to win? TJ, we'll start with you. Keys to the game is being responsible with the football. Turnovers are going to matter. This is the type of game you cannot have turnovers because it should be a close game. Uh, so for me, it's turnovers. And then Michigan getting pressure on Quinn Ewers. If we can limit our turnovers and get pressure on Quinn Ewers, I think that is the path to victory for Michigan. So mine are kind of weird. So I have if I want Alec Orgy to throw the ball more than 24 times in this game. I, I think like you. I do. So more than so that's like six a quarter basically is what I think Michigan will like him more under that. I think Texas wants him over that. I also yeah. think third down is going to be huge in the distance, especially. So, like, Michigan needs to live in the th uh, third down in three yards to three third down in five yards. If it's anything right. over that, they're yeah, going to have yeah, serious yeah. issues in the def uh, in this game. Yeah, Michigan's got to remain on schedule. I don't disagree yeah. because we don't – I you know, I think John would agree. Being in third and long consistently with Alex Orgy, now can he – you know, can he uh, complete a forward pass? Of course he can, but to do it consistently throughout a game – with, there's just an unknown, and until he can prove it, I mean, hey, if he can prove it, we'll find out. But we definitely need to be ahead of the ahead of the chance, for sure. And also for Texas, got to get better in the red zone. We talk about the offense. Offense, people need to go back and watch that Alabama game. We had two red zone possessions in that game where we settled. One, we settled for a field goal. One, we got stopped on fourth down. We could have won that game by three touchdowns if we just score points in the red zone. We were bad at that last year. Um, so that's something Sark needs to be better at. That's something the players need to be better at as well. I think it was a lack of execution on certain throws by Quinn because he does – that is his biggest issue is uh, processing um, for the most part. But once – that's his one thing. If he can hit on that, I feel very confident. And then also Sark needs to stop being so cute in the red zone. I think that's part of his issue. Yeah, I remember that at the Falcons. Uh, yeah, he, he definitely, he definitely was, uh, and that was definitely one of the things that caught him some flack, um, at the Falcons, but, um, yeah, no, I, th I think you guys both make great points. Um, you know, Moose is asking, can he convert third and longs? I think you, I, I would expect to see Kirk Campbell draw up similar plays, um, like, uh, against Alabama, um, when they threw that that chip shot to uh, that 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 short ball to uh, to Blake Corum, I expect right. Donovan Edwards to to be utilized in a similar way. Texas won't be quite expect like they're going to be having a spot. Oh, he froze on us. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think what Michigan will do is you know you could put Donovan Edwards in the slot. You can have you can also split Colson Loveland out wide. We got Samaj Morgan too, who's who's our speed guy. Um, you know, we'll find out though. I mean, listen, it's not a position Michigan wants to be in. We do not want to be behind the chains. We have to stay on schedule. If Texas can consistently keep us off schedule, Michigan's offense is gonna it's gonna be a problem. There's there's no question about it. Yeah, that's why I said that's one of the keys to the game. And, like, yeah, it's kind of funny, too, now thinking about Donovan Edwards and Jane Blue. Obviously, Edwards has way more experience, but they're pretty similar backs in that they're good pass catchers out of the backfield. They have burners. So, yeah, I think Sark kind of wants to do the same thing with Jaden Blue and get him in the slot and uh, use him in the pass catching game as well. I'm going to be intrigued if we unleash Cole Cabana because that's so that's one of our little speed demons. He's one of those 10, 500-meter guys, and uh, – He's his high school tape's insane, but it's one of those things where he's not great in pass coverage. So he's not, you know, they didn't really, you know, obviously they redshirted him his freshman year. It's, I'm, I'm interested to see if they use him as a secret weapon because he's he is that type of player. He's he's definitely an X factor type, but uh, we'll see if, if this year he gets some run. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to try to try to shut up from here on out, uh, other than to just remind everybody that, uh, like I said, we've we've got the deep dive coming up here. Twenty three minutes. Um, we got Mark and Steve Dace coming up um, Thursday uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, TJ, you got your show uh, with Dennis Fithian as the special guest Thursday uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. Yep. Yep, so we got Dennis Fifty and tomorrow on the call and show. He's from Rivals, uh, formerly of 97 won the ticket. Uh, he's you know one of the one of the I would say 
uh, larger voices in the Michigan community. So we're excited to have them. It should be a great show. We're definitely going to be talk recruiting. And actually, I'm going to put some breaking news out here for our, our community right now. I was going to wait till Thursday, but F it. We'll do it now. I am locking in Jaden Sanders. So if anybody wants to know, uh, yesterday I was hesitant to lock in Jaden Sanders. I'm locking it in now. Um, I was tempted to do it yesterday. EJ Howland put in a prediction today. I'm not going to wait and be the last one to do it because of Thursday. So I'm locking in Jaden Sanders. And we'll have an update on that definitely on the Tuesday show, possibly tomorrow, depending on where the conversations take us. Had to get that public, bro. I was pissed I missed it because EJ took it today. Lock it in, uh, folks. In, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I've heard, of, I've, I've definitely seen some uh, some crystal balls and some, yeah, and some, uh, some confidence on uh, that. And I could have did it yesterday. And I was like, all right, that's got to wait for a little bit more intel. And but hey, whatever. They got it. They got it in before I did. So it is what it is. Yep, I'll be watching, probably uh, trying to recover from from my my Atlanta trip. Because uh, for those of you who didn't notice, I'm in a hotel, and that's why I keep cutting in and out a little bit. Um, Matt, go ahead and let people know about the Texas Longhorns live show that you do every Monday. Yep, so I'm here 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Texas show. Um, just join us, guys. I want to get the conversation more involved with you guys. I think it's more fun that way. Um, I've been ranking rooms in the SEC as well, so that's been pretty interesting. I ranked the quarterback rooms, running back rooms, tight end rooms so far. Uh, got a lot of hate. I've also <laughs> had a video about Texas being more talented than Oklahoma because Parker Thune uh, showed up on the Mark Rogers show and said Oklahoma has more talent than Texas this year, which was a uh, mighty big of him to say. But uh, I have that out there as well on the SEC and Texas channel, so go give that a uh, watch. Well, uh, we'll be we'll be watching, um, and for me, and and here we go with uh, with predictions. Um, so, so what do you think is going to happen? Uh, we'll start with Matt this time. Uh, give your prediction. Wait, uh, still two months away. I know that, and both of you have the right to change this. So, so I'm going to say that. But, but as of right now, um, what do you think is going to happen? So. Man, I'm going to pick Texas 21-17. I think it's a really good game. I think it goes down to the fourth quarter. But I think the combination of offensive line, quarterback, and uh, coach coming back for Texas, and a lot of that being replaced for Michigan comes is the biggest factor in the game. I also think we'll be able to hold up enough. I'm not saying we're going to stop Michigan's defensive line because that's just not going to happen. But we're going to be able to hold up enough to give Quinn enough time to be able to attack them down the field because I think that's what it's going to come down to honestly you're not going to be able to move the ball go on 12 place drivers this team you're going to have to hit them deep and I think the speed that we have we're able to attack vertically and get enough points on the board and end up winning the game yeah so I am going to take Michigan 28 24 I, I don't know if either team gets the 30 I think it's going to be a tough game I think Michigan is going to edge it out uh, because you know us being at home is a big a big factor for me um, it's being it also it being so early in the season, both teams are going to have a lot to learn in terms of chemistry with each other. They're only going to have one game under their belt. I do think the Quinn Ewers factor matters in terms of experience, but I also think Michigan being at home is going to is going to pay dividends for us. And I think that's what it's going to get us the victory. If this game was in Texas, because of our QB uncertainty, I don't know if I'd have the same score prediction, but because it is at home, I'm going 28-24. The boys in blue, go Michigan. Let's get it. And I'm gonna stay neutral as moderator today. So, uh, so, but, uh, but I think you guys can probably guess. I know. I think you guys can probably guess. 